Hi there, this is Jay. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to discuss something quite important. Could logging as you hike the Appalachian Trail be illegal? By the rules, it looks like it is now more than ever before. Now officially this may only impact vloggers who monetize their videos, plan on monetizing their videos, or plan on generating income on one way or another from the videos that they record on the trail. This also applies not only to the Appalachian Trail, but it could apply to the Pacific Crest Trail, CDT. It could apply to any trail that's in public lands managed currently by National Forest Service or the National Park Service, which also includes BLM. So places where public land where people can camp for free. If you film at your campsite at BLM, it could affect that as well. The National Park Service and the BLM land are all managed by the Department of Interior, so you kind of have similar rules going. For a while now, officially filming in the National Park without a permit for commercial use was illegal, officially. And there was always the worry that you could get fined, you can get ticketed while you're filming. But the understanding was that this only applied to like large crews with additional gear, you know, people with boom mic lights and kind of interrupting the visit for other visitors. And it didn't really apply too much. I did see that there was a big YouTube channel, travel channel, and they got fined a thousand dollars and prohibited from filming a national park managed lands ever again. So they actually just stopped visiting national parks. Problem is national parks, national monuments, national historical sites, they're just, they own so much land and so much beautiful land that it would just be a pain. It'd just be sad not to be able to visit them and just to show everyone in the world like what the United States has to offer. Oddly enough though, the rules are updated enough that photographers didn't have the same rules. You can take photographs for commercial use on public lands and national parks as long as it's just you and a tripod, perfectly fine. But if you and a tripod have a camera and you hit that record button, although it's right there, you can be fine for doing the same thing that you're doing with still, with still photography. It's, it's a rather, it's a pretty much dumb rule. It doesn't make any sense, but that's the way things have been. Now in late 2018, two National Park Service officers actually cited a filmographer named Gordon Price. He was filming a movie called Crawford Road at the Yorktown Battlefield and Colonial National Historical Park in Virginia. And in 2008, he got cited and he got a lawyer and he fought it and they dropped the fine. But Gordon Price then sued the National Park Service as well as the Attorney General, as well as the Department of Agriculture, like basically big systems. And on January 22nd, 2001, a district court judge, Colleen Collar Cotley, sided with Price. And with that announcement, it actually freed all the YouTubers, any vloggers, Instagrammers, TikTokers that were worried about potentially getting cited, you were free. And it was, you know, a load off our backs because although it was unlikely, it was possible. It just, you know, one ranger, his football team loses the night before, he decides to write as many tickets as he wants next day. You never know what's going to happen. She wrote that Mr. Price's filmmaking at these parks constitutes a form of expressive speech protected by the First Amendment. And that the creation of a film must also fall within the ambit of the First Amendment's protection of freedom of expression. Defined otherwise would artificially disconnect an integral piece of the expressive process of filmmaking. She also added though, because she didn't want you know everyone going crazy, like film companies filming, a more targeted permitting regime for commercial filming, which is more closely connected to the threat posed by large groups and heavy filming equipment, may pass constitutional muster in the future, which sounds accurate, sounds perfectly reasonable, right? Stopping one person from filming, 
is constitutionally illegal, but a crew, yes, because you want to protect resources and parks have a priority for that. And that seemed perfectly reasonable and things were great. And little did we know that things were changing. We had no, no idea. On August 23rd, 2022, the U.S. Courts of Appeals reversed the ruling. I didn't know about this until just a couple of days ago. Now, I'm no expert on how the courts work, but from what I can tell, the Courts of Appeals is the second highest level court in the federal court system, and the Supreme Court is higher. But this was a Court of Appeals in the District of Columbia. I'm not sure where that falls, but it's, it's high up the chain, I think. You know, if anybody knows for sure how the court orders work, like the state courts lower and then federal courts, I don't know, it gets kind of crazy. But it's, it's pretty high up in the District of Columbia's court level system. In a two to one ruling, they sided with the Park Service stating that the filming is not protected by the First Amendment. Oddly enough, their reason is, a filmmaker does not seek to communicate with others at the location in which he or she films. The filmmaker does not use the location as a forum. It is not itself a communicative activity. It is merely a step in the creation of speech that will be communicated at some other time, usually in some other location. The third judge, however, strongly disagreed. My colleagues reimagined the public forum to protect the stumping politician, but not the silent photographer, to shield the shouting protester, but not the note-taking reporter. These distinctions find no basis in First Amendment jurisprudence. From what I can figure out, that first judge was saying that freedom of speech is only protected if you are basically verbally speaking out at that moment, that is freedom of speech. But if you're, say, at the Mall of America and you see something and you take pictures or you write things down, that is not protected under freedom of speech. And the distinctions the judges reported didn't have anything to do with commercial or non-commercial use. It was mostly really all about the First Amendment and freedom of speech. So they're basically saying that if you go to a national park and you see something, something happening and you film it and you don't have a permit, you didn't get a permit before you filmed it, it's going to be illegal because you're going to present it at a later time, although there's no real way to present it at the current time. Some, there was an attorney on YouTube who did bring up that live streams would have a live public forum, but they didn't care about that. So you still can't film in a national park. It's, it's pretty crazy. From this ruling on October 28th, 2022, the National Park Service changed the rule. They didn't just go back to the old rule. They clarified it even further, which actually impacts us even more. Federal law requires a permit for all commercial filming, no matter the size of the crew or the type of equipment. This includes individuals or small groups that don't use much equipment but generate revenue by posting footage on websites such as YouTube and TikTok. They did clarify further that the primary focus of the NPS, however, is on commercial filming that has the potential to impact park resources and visitors beyond what occurs from normal visitor use of park areas. Examples of this type of filming are productions that use substantial equipment such as sets and lighting, productions with crews that exceed five people, and filming in closed areas, wilderness areas, or in locations that would create conflicts with other visitors or harm sensitive resources. The hard part to grasp is that they specifically now called out YouTube and TikTok and even an individual posting for YouTube. Sure, they add that the primary focus is on having crews of people get permits, but again, by the rules, if someone has a bad day, they could come and cite you. A lot of people may not know, but the Appalachian Trail is actually one of three national scenic trails that the National Park Service manages. There are national scenic trails all over, but the AT itself, the National Park Service manages and their rules will apply. That's why there are no drones allowed on the AT. Like you can, it's weird, you can hike off the AT 
launch a drone and fly it around, but you can't launch it from the AT. And I believe, I think it was like a 500 foot corridor. It fluctuates as you go, but it is National Park Service managed. So this rule specifically applies. It also applies to say Harper's Ferry, that whole town, or at least a brunt of it, can't film there without a permit. On my through hike of the Appalachian Trail in 2022, I did only see one ranger, and that was at a campground in Shenandoah National Park. So the odds of you bumping into one are pretty slim, and then the odds of one of them carrying are also pretty slim. But then again, one person has a bad day, he spilled coffee on his pants in the morning, you can get a ticket. During my research, I did find a couple of YouTube channels that stated that they will no longer film in national parks because of this worry. And it's, I mean, it's a possibility. It's just sad though, that national parks, national monuments, BLM, national forest, there's so much, that's all the public land that we can enjoy, but we cannot film for YouTube officially uh, as long as we monetize the videos or plan on monetizing any video with the footage included. And right now the National Park Service is the only one that calls out YouTubers and TikTok, but it's only time before the National Forest Service, the Department of Agriculture follows suit and all their lands get similar rules. It's definitely an odd time for us vloggers now. Um, we'll see what happens here. Now, some of you are wondering if you're vlogging the Appalachian Trail or you plan to, should you not do it or go ahead and do it? I believe, like before, that it's highly unlikely that they will get you unless you're doing something obviously wrong in the, in the entire Appalachian Trail. If you're doing something wrong and it's on video, they're going to cite you for it. If your video is monetized or it's vague now. Some people are saying that if YouTube monetizes your video, you did not have intent to make money from it. So you're not officially to blame. Who knows? But if you ever want to monetize your videos, break a thousand subscribers in however many hours and start making some money off the videos, it's, it'll be iffy. I would say it's still fine. I probably will still keep going out and filming. It's just, again, I think they will use this rule to target obnoxious people, people trying to tell people not to get in the way of the shot, people making a ton of noise, people doing something silly just to record on the videos or filming people without permission and someone didn't want to be filmed, but you got filmed, he'll complain. And then normally maybe there was nothing they could do, but now the ranger could come by and find you. So. If you're vlogging, I would say stick to everything. I just said like be respectful. Don't film anybody without their explicit permission. Don't be too loud. If there's people in the shelter and you want to film something, just step away. I mean, their talking will get in your footage as well, but you want to step away so you talking at the camera doesn't necessarily bother them. Although talking at a camera is just like talking to people, so it's similar volume, but some people don't like it. So you just want to avoid any situation where somebody might complain about you and then that could cause problems later on. So maybe you won't break a thousand subscribers and you won't monetize any of your videos. And <laughs> it's hard to realize like what the rule, what the definition for commercial use is. Maybe you intended not to, but you do it later it's, I don't know. I don't know what the rules are going to be. I wish it was clarified much, much more clearly and less ambiguously. Of course, you can get a permit, but from everything I've, I've been seeing, it's usually like, it's up to the park, but it's $140 to $160 for the application. And that's to apply for it. If it's approved, well, if it's not approved, they just tell you and you're out that money. If it's approved, you still have to pay for the permit. And unfortunately with the permit, you have to put in where you'll film, at what time, what gear you have. I think someone said one permit application asked for if they're gonna have any animals, just like all this information. And you also have to have insurance going to the National Park Service in case something happens. So you have to have all this. So that would be great for like someone filming a wedding that just one day. The permit seems reasonable, 
But if you're going backpacking for six months, is there a permit that applies for the whole six months? No. <laughs> there's, in fact, there's no information about getting a permit on the Appalachian Trail to film on the Appalachian Trail. There's, I don't even know if that exists, that you can have one so long, or maybe you have to get a permit for each day. But if it's 140 to $160 just for the application, most of my videos make less than 50. Some of the AT ones made a little more, but all the other national park videos I've made, usually under 50, 20 to $50. And that alone is not, it's far less than the permit. So it's, it actually makes it basically impossible to get permits just because it's extremely difficult. Oh yeah, I forgot to add, it also takes 20 to 30 days to process. So you have to apply for it before you get notified that you're going to approve or disprove and then you have to get the permit. So it just, it just doesn't work. Hopefully the next court ruling sides in favor of Gordon Price and basically releases us small vlogging channels or just one person so we can actually go and film and basically we're basically public relations for national parks, all the national trails and we do it for free yet they're going to make it more impossible for us to do so. So hopefully the rules get cleared out and they, they mimic what they do to photographers that you can film for commercial use if you're by yourself and just one tripod and no extra crews or additional gear. That's great because I wouldn't, I've been to places where you see like a big group of people filming and you have to walk around them and I wouldn't want that. Just one tripod, one camera. Sure, I carry multiple cameras, but I mean, a GoPro is that <laughs> big. But hopefully it clears it all up so it uh, frees us all to enjoy nature, like the reason we went out there instead of worrying about them sighting us. And the problem is then, if everybody becomes too scared to film their vlog, their through hikes, and then all the people that enjoy watching them and living the trail through their eyes, they don't get to anymore. No new ones, or there'll be a lot fewer. Or I guess all the channels will have to be below a thousand subscribers. And it, I will say having monetized videos on YouTube does help a through hike. It takes time to do it all. And it's great to share, but it helps in that there is extra money and then it helps basically fund your through hike. And there are a lot of other vloggers out there who have monetized and I'm sure they feel the same way. In fact, a lot of people, I feel when they start, they feel like if they do well, they can kind of get a following and continue and just kind of build off that. But with these new rules, who knows what's gonna happen? I guess our biggest hope is our subscriber counts basically stay so low that we stay off the park system radar. The sad thing is YouTube is my go-to source for a lot of information regarding places I can go. National parks, national monuments, various off-roading places I can go to, uh, just various passes, just everything actually. And if all that went away, you would just be resorted to old videos or I guess websites, because I guess you can still take pictures at these places. Although a video is just a series of pictures, just continuous pictures, but I guess um, it's going to be tough. And I guess maybe the national park systems feel that they're being overwhelmed with visitors. So they want to reduce how much advertisement is out there. So they don't want, they want to cut down a number of vloggers showing off the parks. Could that be a reason? I don't know. One person on a YouTube channel guessed that the National Mall of America is managed by the National Park Service. And there's quite often there's demonstrations there and now nobody can film there for commercial use, which I mean, a lot of people I know sell stock videos that are editorial, just selling that thing, those things. And without a permit, it's now illegal. In fact, one of the websites I went to was the National Press Photographers Association. And they had a bunch of information about the article, about the rulings and how it impacts people. And they have lawyers that are working to try to repeal this decision as well. And I'm sure they're concerned if they 
were to go to some area that's managed by the park system and they film something and they can be cited for <laughs> not getting a permit before the event occurred. It's, it's, it's crazy right now. Well, we'll see what happens next. It's kind of out of our little feeble hands. We could write our congressman about it and try to explain to them how silly this rule is and how photographers, it's okay, but videographers with one camera, it's not. And please comment below how you feel about this. Um, it is official ruling and it stands right now according to the National Park Service's website. So please comment below how you feel. I'm sure a lot of you are probably as upset as I am. I just found out this information two days ago and just that fact that they called out YouTubers specifically makes it a lot more dangerous than it used to be. But yeah, please feel free to comment below. If you know any other information about this, if you know more about the law than me, which is probably a huge percentage of people, please tell me what's going on. Is the Circuit Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia, how high is that on the tier? I, th I thought it was a federal court level but I don't know. I don't know exactly what's going on. But yeah, just comment below. Let's discuss what's going to happen. And please share this information because it affects any YouTuber that monetizes their videos that displays public lands. It's not just National Park or Appalachian Trail. It's everything. And it's, uh, it's, it's pretty tough. I mean, I guess I'll be going to Canada later this year and I'll be going to Sweden and... From what I know, they don't care, I think. I'm not sure. But National Park Service, I don't know what you're doing. I hope you clear that up. Don't write that it, the intent was to get the crews. Write that single individuals with one camera and one tripod can film for commercial use because we have so little impact. In fact, our biggest impact with the one camera is getting more visitors going to the parks and we all promote like leave no trace be respectful of your visit and it's gonna go out the window it's quite sad i mean before youtube i don't even think i knew most of these national parks even existed i lived in chicago area and there's nothing around there i didn't know what national monuments were i thought they were like a building it just i mean i learned so much from youtube and all that can kind of go away if this ruling stands we'll see thanks for watching i hope i didn't upset too many people um, from what i can tell this is what's going on right now and it's sad and uh, i hope the vloggers that are going out already hope you keep it up though um, as long as you don't monetize it's perfectly legal for you it's just when you do i mean i guess you have to be more careful but this, I think the same thing applies. Be respectful, be discreet, be out of the way, and things should be fine. Should. Unless something happens and they see your videos and they come back to you. I don't know. It's crazy. Crazy, crazy. Crazy world right now. It's like, like I've been saying the government is trying to make everything illegal. And then you do anything and they'll just, if they want, they can cite you, fine you. It's, uh, it's kind of crazy right now crazy world but thanks for watching you all take care and have a good night